In this video, we do an all-star breakdown in studio with Harrison Ramsey. What's up everyone, Brian B, West Coast Swing Online. We are here in studio. We're gonna do a breakdown of a pattern kind of live, just like we do the champion breakdowns where we actually look at the pattern, we figure out a fundamental way to do it. We're gonna actually go through that live with my good friend Harrison Ramsey. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your history, how old are you, where are you from? Uh, I just turned 18. I live up in Chicago and I've been dancing for going on 12 years now. So I've known you for about eight. Yeah. And back in the day, you used to hack my basic moves. So explain to me your coach and like how you learned West Coast Swing, because you're a great dancer and advanced, or all-star dancer now, uh, that has way cooler patterns than I currently have, which we're gonna break down on the video. So explain like how you fundamentally learn your patterns, what your coach trains you to do, and how we got here today. Uh, one of the things that I always enjoyed from my coach was that she drilled the basics so your 12 basics, right? She drilled them until you could do them with your eyes closed. And then when we go to learn these complicated patterns and you kind of employ the same idea of break it down to its most basic form because you already understand that. Bingo. So what we did uh, a little bit off camera, just so I had a clue, um, is Harrison danced through a bunch of moves and you guys probably watched some of that B-roll here in the video. Um, but. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through a pattern that he's gonna do. We're gonna talk about the footwork, where we're kind of adjusting the rules, why um, we'd adjust the rules, and to show you that their fundamentals still exist underneath while you're growing these cool patterns. So like Harrison said, you know, you wanna pick your core patterns, but then you wanna branch off of those and you have to play with the rules a little bit. Yeah, uh, maybe a bend. A bend, so like for instance, the rules are still there, right? But as Harrison dances pattern, he did about eight different things with his feet, but yet I watched it and I still saw the move underneath. And as we pull Miss Megan in here to go through this, you're gonna find out and maybe you can share some. I feel like the follower's footwork is generally more fundamental. The walks and the triples seem to click into a more fundamental place, whereas us as leaders, you can take the liberty to. Yeah, no, I totally agree with that. When you look at a follower's footwork, she has to do the walks and triples, especially to set herself up for turns and to be in the right position. And that clues us as leaders in on all of what's going on and where I can change things and when I can actually lead what I want to lead. Yep, and, and when you do see some of the followers that will change their things and they'll, they'll end up on the wrong foot, but they are well aware that they're ending up on the wrong foot and they're correcting it within the next two beats to set themselves up, like you said, for the, uh, the, to be in the correct position for us as leaders to lead what we intended. So uh, we're gonna hop off, we're gonna bring Miss Megan in, we're gonna go through their pattern, and then we're literally gonna work through it piece by piece and talk about it. So you guys are gonna learn it, and you're also gonna see a little bit of the mindset of how I look at this stuff um, and how Harrison even builds this stuff. All right, cool beans. So Harry's gonna go ahead and dance this from a couple different sides, and we're gonna talk about it as a group. Bingo. And can you count that? Count what you're, count, kind of count what you're feeling? I'm going a one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight, nine, and ten. Cool. So it starts with a slingshot, which we just did as a move of the week not too long ago. So um, walk me through the slingshot. Can we do it from this side, please, sir? So if we look at the slingshot, go our one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So I want you to see this. If I was a follower doing a right side pass, one, two, three, and four, it would land me on the right foot. So this is still pretty fundamental feeling. However, right off the bat, we have to adjust that. So talk to me how you land her on count four um, with, the, with the little body roll and the slingshotty part. What are you doing to make sure she lands on the right foot on four and doesn't triple and still lands on the correct foot? So I'm kind of communicating through the connection because I have both hands. So I have a lot of control right now and I can ask her to just completely stop right here if I want to. And then we can ease into that four. And that's almost the idea of what's going on is I'm holding through the connection to get her to land there. So if I go one and I just let her go, she's getting there on three rather than four. But if I Bingo. keep that connection closer towards me, we c I can let her out and onto that Bingo, four. so we're like monitoring, like we could, we could pop this one, two, three, one, two, uh, three, right? Or like you said, we're monitoring this one, two, and at the rate for three, sit, four, whatever we choose. Mm -hmm. 
Cool. And so at this point, though, however, I'll hop back over to Mr. Harrison. At this point, we are on the wrong foot, right? So if I looked at, we'll let Harry do the slingshot. If I did one, two, three, and four, I would, as the leader, be on my left foot, right? So automatically, he's off of his basic foot. So, but he's in charge of this. He knows what's going on. At least one of us knows what's going on. You probably have a clue, and I'm clueless, right? So fly through the rest of this for me, and then we'll discuss what goes on. <laughs> Bingo. So count me through the uh, five and six. Count me through five and six and we'll discuss that. Two beat increments, folks. Two, three, four, five, and six. So if we freeze here and I, and I did Miss Megan's footwork and I did one, two, three, and four, and I were to anchor step five and six, I would be on my left foot, which Miss Megan is on her left foot. So this still feels pretty natural to you at this point, yes? Yeah, it just felt like a rock and go. So it's a rock and go in essence, that kind of a feel. So pop through that. So you guys don't know what a rock and go is. Google ultimate guide to rock and go. We explain it in detail. Yeah, we'll do it, we'll do it from this side. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. Actually, could you pop her back and anchor her at that point? Like, yeah, so this was even more fundamental, right? We'd have one, two, three, four, and then five and six, that could be possible. Could you pop her back the other way and anchor her? One, two, three, four, five, and six, right? So those would be like two ways that would still feel pretty natural. Does that make sense? All right, so now what happens, let's go Harrison facing this direction, and then we'll talk about that turn underneath because you do some cool stuff with your footwork. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So that's Megan's left foot, and then Harrison turns her for seven and eight. A seven and eight, nine and 10. Cool beans. So if you watch carefully, you already fixed your footwork once to get on the correct foot right there. So talk me through the turn. Like what do you, what, what's your priority for her? And then what's, what's going on with your footwork underneath or the concepts that you're using? So what I did until I got really comfortable with doing this with one hand was I would keep both hands here and I would try and communicate through this, stay where you are as much as I can. And then I'm thinking of taking my right side here to my left hand, like a waist wrap, and I'm wrapping myself in and keeping that connection until the last minute. And then I bring this right hand through to get her to take the go. Boom, the can you try that one more go. time from this side? I like the wrap. So I'm wrapping right here, right side, left hand, and then this comes Boom. through. Let me try that. So you're going for the slingshot, and then you're going this way. And then once you get comfortable with the body mechanics and the lead, you can do it without that left and hand. And so to some degree, this left hand kind of helps. Ah, oh, that way. <laughs> that helps. And then what goes on with your footwork? And we'll talk about that progression. Like, what, what's your, what do you need to do with your footwork? Because the priority is what, her? First. Yeah, then, then making sure that I finish with an anchor step. Yeah, who cares where about I want that? To. We'll figure that stuff out. But um, I'm doing a fake on four to get onto that right foot, like Brian talked about earlier. Normally I'd be on my left foot there right now. And so I do. We're talking about the beginning, the one, two, three, and four. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. But so I fake there on four. I go one, two, hold for three, four, right? So I'm on the opposite foot. And now somewhere in the pattern, I'm going to have to do another fake to get back on my own footwork, right? So what I do for that fake is I do it while I'm turning, and I do a two-step turn rather than a triple-step turn. So if I did a triple step, I would go triple step. But I found that it's really easy if we take this from four to just do a two-step turn, and that gets me right onto my footwork. Five, six, right? Still giving her that forward and then I can finish triple step, anchor step. Bingo, so that's where when we see in patterns and you can't understand the fundamentals, like you pro I watched you do this off camera a bunch, and that's not the only thing you did. You did about four different versions of things, right? But still being aware of where he needed to be. So when the pattern started and when it ended, it all clicked in my mind. I could see the walks and triples. Megan looked fine the whole time, but Harrison did a bunch of different stuff. 
do a couple different your footwork versions. All you have to do is dance it, and you're, you'll come up with five different ones. I, I know for <laughs> sure. Bingo. Right, so if you watch carefully, that was not at all what he just taught. <laughs> but it still works, right? Bingo. Yeah, and talk about what you do at the end. So as you feed the hand to the end, it's going to present some different options, like as you feed to our waist. Yeah, so if we just think about it like we're in a forward presentation, right? I, one of the things I like to think about sometimes is I'm using my arm almost like a guardrail on the end of like a highway. And so I can use that to guide my partner kind of where I want her to go. And there's a lot of reasons for that. But it allows me, if I wanted to bring her all the way over here. <laughs> there's a wall over there, yeah, sir. <laughs> I can bring her over there. Or if I just want her to track straight, I can roll all the way along. So I make contact right here below my hand, and then I slide up. And then like what, now, now you've got that contact, what else can we do with it? I can pick her up in closed position from there. So if we just go from the forward presentation, I can slide this here and I'm immediately in closed position, which opens up all my other pattern options. And then from that guardrail, we could still feed around to other different. Oh yeah, totally. I hadn't thought a gajillion. That. Let's see. Harrison, what's he going to come up with? Boom, there's over the head. Bingo. Yeah, so hopefully that was um, helpful. I think the key takeaways are what, we'll cozy up to the camera there, Mr. Harrison. Um, key takeaways, like in your journey, because like I said, we've known each other for like eight years or so. Um, if you guys have ever been to Derby City Swing, we have something called, that's our swing event here in Louisville, about 600 people last weekend of January. And we have a Mom's Choice Award, which you guys don't know what that is. Um, my mom picks her favorite two leaders and followers for no other reason than she thinks that they have it. So she's very proud of you as you've flourished in your dance career. Um, but I think the fundamental takeaway, do you have anything to add, Miss Megan? No, it's very uh, followable. There's not much different. Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot I don't have a mic. Uh, it's very followable, meaning that it just feels like a regular pattern. Um, a slingshot with a rock and go and an inside turn. Yeah, so again, fundamentally, as you guys are looking at patterns, like you're trying to find your core 12 patterns or so, um, and then there's a branch, which reminds me we're working on that, a pattern tree, Yay. where we literally track all of the patterns that we have at West Coast Swing Online with like a little pattern tree. So you can see, you know, push, pass, whip, and where do those big branches go, and how do you actually literally cobble this stuff together to create patterns. So learn your basics from your teacher. Was that a fun process, or did you not like that process? It wasn't fun at the time, but now I'm definitely thankful that I did it, because after like, two months worth of only doing basics, you're like, but I wanna do that. And then she's like, not yet. Yeah, and see, what's fun for me is, um, like, I look at everything fundamentally, and that's kind of the way that I always do, and so does, so does Miss Megan. So she likes this, because she's a very in-the-box type of person. She wants things to be fundamental. She doesn't take a lot of chances. Um, would you say that's Not fair? Not less than them. Yeah, um, but Harrison's really explored that, but I think it comes all from that foundation. So, thank you, sir. Thanks for coming by. Enjoy your time in Louisville. Thank you, Mr. Jacob, behind the camera. Uh, make sure you head on over to West Coast Swing Online, enter your email address, get 50 free videos, and then you will be part of our Move of the Week Club where we share emails with super helpful, cool stuff. And uh, some people asked where you can buy the t-shirts. I don't have mine on now, but we have an entire store down below, a lot of uh, West Coast Swing and other dance-related t-shirts. Um, you can click those and always check the description box below because we share some cool things like we have a West Coast Swing ebook and other helpful free resources for you guys. I think the link for the shirts is also in the, in the description, description below. Yep, cool. Thanks, guys. We'll see you again soon.